Such feedback loops are built into Bletcher's model of SIDA. His view of a self-sustaining, self-generating university community surrounded and nourished by student-led business assumes feedback loops between education and commerce. Another feedback loop forms when students adopt 30 high school students from their home and communities and also they are sponsoring people when they get jobs. So integrative thinkers kit is basically causal model building and generative reasoning. These two things are the things which we talked about now. Causal model building and generative reasoning combine to form one of the most potent tools in integrative thinkers kit. Generative reasoning seeks to build new models that take into account data that doesn't agree with the current models available. Okay. And a tool for forming such models is what is called a radial metaphor developed by George Lakoff and Mark Johnson by which one devises a metaphor and builds a model around it. Now what is a metaphor? A metaphor is nothing but a type of a storytelling. For example, metaphor to describe a business organization. Now if I tell you, um, think of a business organization as a family. So we have the CEO who is a head of the family. We got the vice presidents who are the next in line, maybe the fathers or the, or the grandfathers. We have a great grandfather, the CEO, and the, grandf the great grand the grandfathers are all the VPs. And below them, we got the assistant vice presidents, you know, who are the, the fathers or whatever, not like a family you visualize. Or you look at business organizations as a market, so you visualize a marketplace. Or you visualize it as an army, regimented, but discipline is the main uh, stay. Or a sports team where everybody is, sport, is playing towards a goal or as an ecosystem. Now, this is called as a radial metaphor. You take anything, you can create a radial metaphor. So you can, you can take a, say this, this, this particular talk I'm giving you, the lecture. This lecture can be taken as a, uh, a motivational speech, A. It can be taken as a learning, B. It can be taken as a storytelling, C. It can be taken as something else, which whatever you want to think of. So the same thing, can be seen in different different contexts and for each of them you can have a story. Metaphor is a type of a story uh, which, which, which is very imaginative using all the sensory perceptions and in the bargain when the story is being told or narrated, the person gets the input of the story. A classic example of metaphor is the Ramayana and the Mahabharata stories. The values are sown in people's minds through the stories. So the story actually speaks a lot about value sowing. Right now, when we go to the next one, the radial metaphor tool helps integrative thinkers in two ways. It helps thinkers conceive of the situation at hand in a way that's conducive to the creating a new model. By having some metaphor, it becomes easier for me to imbibe what I want to imbibe. It helps with the cognitive heavy lifting uh, of keeping a coherent whole in mind while honing the individual parts. These two are very descriptive about what I said. It tells you that on one hand, it says. Whatever I want to do, integrative, I can do it. If I want to integrate a value into my child, I need to tell him a metaphor, a story. That's what it says in simple terms. Okay. Bletcher's radial metaphor when building the SIDA model was an organization as a family. SIDA is nurturing a loving parent and students are the children who thrive on the parent's love. Bletcher is quite explicit about the role love and affection play in his vision of the education. But love and disciplining, discipline go hand in hand. Students must obey SIDA's many rules if they want to continue to receive schools, love and nurturing. Right? Bletcher's causal modeling of the SIDA can be seen in three levels. Basic level is combination of teleological and material modeling. Why should I educate the people? Why? And why comes to X? If I do X, Y will happen. So back and forth, what do you do? X leads to Y. Why should Y come? Y should come because of this reason. So if Y should come for this reason, then go for X. So it's a X to Y and asking questions Y, Y and then coming back to X. Young people can gain hope and self-worth with education. Basic thing, first level. Second level, dynamic system that takes advantage of the feedback effects between happy, motivated, successful students and the community where they live, work and socialize. That is a, when they are in the university. And the third level is radial metaphor of SIDA as a family. So SIDA is a very nurturing family. It's got all the things that a family wants, love and care. Most of the black students who are studying there came from a social background where they were neglected, no love and care by the society at large. But an organization like, a, like this was a, like a family and it was also like a society. And where this society, this number of people, Bletcher and his, and his team were giving them the love and the affection when they were not getting. So they felt good about themselves. 
So at the end of it, it becomes a radial metaphor of Sidab family. It's a place where I feel safe and secure and I feel nurtured. And when that happens, my growth in terms of learning and being a useful citizen takes place much, much better, much, much faster. Causal modeling, you can practice this in three levels. Basic level, which is what is explained here. You can reverse engineer your own models, pick a belief, better grades help a better job. You have some beliefs, X to Y. So first pick up that. If I get better percentage, I get a better job. Or practice, pick up a belief or a practice. Now one practice which is done in every company is calling team meetings every, every Friday morning or Monday morning or whatever. Do I really need a meeting? In one of the IT companies where I'm doing a regular training, uh, the leaders have been, I've been asking this question that how many meetings you have in a, in, a, in a week? They say we have meeting every day morning, 9 to, depends. In most of the meetings there is a fixed time of reporting but there is no fixed time of leaving. It's very sad. So they find themselves wasting the time. So one of the modules I take is time management for the senior managers. And then it so happens that they say, yeah, I have to have a meeting every Friday, every Monday. I said, why? Review. I want to know the status of the of the of the various projects. Why do you know, want to you know the status of the projects? If I know the status of the projects, I will know to what to what I can tell the customer, the client. Now, why do you need to tell the client every day? And such questioning takes place. So, one when this one when these questionings take place, they have to ask a very simple question that if I'm holding a meeting on Monday, Friday morning. Nobody is saying don't hold a meeting on Friday morning, but let it have a meaningful outcome. You know, we create meetings with the outcome in mind. After some time, the outcome is lost and the meetings remain. So that is something that needs to be questioned. Like the nine, nine o'clock reporting and you know, casual leave and all that. We need to question that thing. Otherwise, the organization will have a problem. So you can reverse engineer your own models, pick a belief or a practice and break down the causal relation reasoning underlying the belief or the practice. This helps you to recognize how you are already using causal modeling without realizing it and shows how the modeling might improve by being more explicit about it. Right? This is the first step. Basic. Next is what you do? You graduate to interviewing another person to understand the causal modeling that underlies a particular belief or the practice. Once I master it, then I start making it on others. The exercise entails speculating on the logic Another person follows to arrive at a particular con conclusion and you will find this challenging. Like uh, I mentioned, you know, we are, we are discuss, we, we, I address some of the people who are decision makers about certain practices they are routinely following. And then when I, when I ask these questions to them as to why this, up to point they explain and beyond that they get defensive. And then in the worst case, worst case of defensive will be, you don't know our company, I know it better. Now I tell them, I don't need to know your company, but I need to, I do know your processes from what you're talking. Now is this process required? So when you hold on to the process and you ask questions, what are you doing the second stage? You're trying to empower that person to become a causal modeling thinker. It requires a certain amount of communication. It should be told in a manner in which it is empowering and not pulling back. Otherwise, people go into defensive. I can't challenge him very aggressively. I have got to ask questions in a certain manner. So one of the tools is assertive inquiry, which I'll be discussing sometime later. Right? Last is the most important takeaway from these interview sessions is that it's extremely difficult to build causal model that adequately takes account of human beings and their wishes and dreams. The important thing to be noted is that everybody doesn't get everything he or she wants. But at the same time, I can give the best shot to whatever is available to me by going through all these steps of thinking process. Generative reasoning, abductive logic. Now when I do these things, this is the best shot I can give and I have various options. Don't you all agree that when your thinking changes, it removes you from a certain type of a sorrow of a tunnel vision? After some time, when you start thinking the same way that you keep on thinking, does it not restrict your feelings and emotions also? When you go for a vacation and you do something new, you've never done bungee jumping or you've never done, say, uh, you've never been on a parasailing or something and you do it for the first time, does it make you joyful or not? 
so when the brain is occupied with something new out of the out of the box it releases a lot of stress it also makes you feel liberated and you have multiple options now why i'm saying this is that i've seen invariably all the generative thinkers all the people who are into integrative thinking invariably they have a sense of a huge optimism and they are always joyful they are joyful because they know to shift the gears of their thinking which leads to an emotional base also into resourceful emotions all the time you know we talk about we want to be happy all the time if you really want to be happy all the time as a human being and also as a company executive then learn to be more and more generative reasoning person more and more integrative person because when you think about integration what happens your brain starts it doesn't get stuck up in one factory setting it starts moving in different directions and it seeks solutions rather than getting into blame fixing of people uh, we need to practice this if you really want to be proactive as an organization as a human being and sustain yourself right causal modeling the goals in this exercise are threefold we want you to see yourself as thinkers capable of conscious causal modeling you must see yourself as thinkers you are capable that underline the word capable i must feel and convince that i am capable i can't say that i am not a topper in the university i have been a dull student i have not done this these are self defeating beliefs i am capable one of the three things we talked about about the self concept in the early one of the earlier chapters remember to understand that your modeling gains power effect and effectiveness when you are when you are conscious and explicit about it i have got to be clear and i have got to state it in so many things that i am capable it's not an apologetic way of doing it it is not half hearted fully to practice using the techniques such a such as systems dynamics and radial metaphors to build sophisticated causal models the third important tool for the integrative thinker is assertive inquiry this is something which we are covering now integrative thinkers use it to explore opposing models and in particular models that oppose their own if we defend our model to others we learn nothing about other models other people hold in their heads is it true or not if i say that i am the best in what i am doing because i have got a track record because i got so many certificates because i got so many prizes and people are acknowledging me i am a brand to reckon with and i start assuming i start really feeling i even tell people that i am the best then what am i doing i am shutting myself off from any other models which i can absorb right so we are kept away to any clues that can lead us to a creative resolution if we do this if we defend our own models assertive inquiry the antidote antidote is what to remove poison we put an antidote right the antidote to advocacy advocacy is inquiry advocacy means i am saying this i am saying this do it there's a why should you say this i've got to inquire if I, if there's an advocacy which says i have to do it this way then i must ask myself a question why should i do it this way if i can put a self inquiry to my self advocacy it's a best starting point in one of the leadership trainings for a large engineering company we have a six day training in which we lay a lot of stress on advocacy inquiry and other th- four parameters where in, in detail one goes through it right so the antidote to advocacy is inquiry which produces meaningful dialogue when you use assertive inquiry to investigate someone else's mental model you will find you will find saliences that you wouldn't have occurred to you and causal relationships you didn't perceive you'll be surprised oh my god people think in this fashion like a classroom lecture is going on there are 60 students who are in rapt attention they love the professor they say oh you teach so well so one professor one one student loves the loves the the, the lecture because he is getting something important for his personal life another student is there because he wants he is finding the 3 hours really enriching because he has to while away his time for 3 hours a third student is wanting to really add value and he finds that there is a lot of gaps in what he has so the professor fills it up a fourth student is enjoying because he loves the professor's jokes so we have four students in a, in a group of 60 who could be having different reasons for doing what they are doing if the professor understand that each one is having a different type of a reason for sitting there then he knows how to give different strokes for different folks a second is he needs to understand that not all of them are coming for the sake of marks and transformation they come for different purposes we all see the one movie together and all of us have got different we all like the movie but the like the 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 reason the cause the reason for liking is different 
that part of it should be understood. The reason why a person is motivated is different. Each one does the same task and is happy, but they are for different reasons they are happy. So you may not want to adopt that mental model as your own, but even the least compelling model can provide clues to saliences or causal relationship that will generate a creative resolution. By talking to many people in short, you start getting different different ideas. Now when will you talk to many people, you have to talk with what is called as naive listening. Naive listening means what? I may be an expert in my field. Like one of the areas where, uh, where, where I do training, uh, I had somebody the other day I met and that uh, gentleman was talking to about the training which I do for so many years. He says uh, he was talking to me something very, very basic. Now I would have looked at him and told him, hey, you know who I am. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a master trainer in this. I wanted to pause and take inputs from him. So while I'm pausing and taking inputs from him, one part of my mind will say, hey, you're an expert. Why are you suffering this stupid fellow? He's ignorant. No. On the contrary, I said, let me see what he has to offer me. Even the most ignorant person about your subject has something to offer you. Now, only when you are open, you realize he is not ignorant. He is giving you a process, a thinking path which you never thought of. Because he comes from an emptiness and an openness. You are full of yourself. And so, you think he is ignorant and in the bargain you stagnate. This is an important thing which some of us are practicing. Right? And you may want to adopt this thing. Now, taking it further. Intent here is not argumentative and its methods isn't to, uh, is to ask leading questions or discourage challenge. It involves a sincere search for another's view and tries to fill the gaps of understanding. Seeks common ground between conflicting models. How does what you are saying overlaps, if at all, with what I suggested? Now, you may want to know how it is done, right? Suppose, let's say I have my colleague. Okay. Now, let's say Sachin is my colleague and Sachin is asking a question to me. Sachin comes out with a proposal. Sir, there's a fantastic thing to take up. Huh, is it so, Sachin? Okay, let me tell me more about it. I don't challenge Sachin. I don't tell him, you, how do you know it? I don't tell him, you know, I don't try to pull him down. In fact, I want to encourage him. I said, okay, what makes you think this is good? So he says, this is what I feel is good about it. So what I'm doing is I'm asking him questions to explore from what salience and from what causality he's operating. Many, many progressive companies today, particularly certain engineering companies with whom I'm associated, they actually do this. Any executive comes with any suggestion, they ask him to take it further. Till he comes to a point where he needs assistance or he's, it's his, it, it becomes his project. And this is possible when I'm into assertive inquiry with you, you know what happens to you? You start validating yourself. You feel nice that people are uh, addressing your idea, not you. And when I address your idea, how do you feel? You feel nice about it, right? Now this requires maturity from the other, other person. So when I'm asking you, when Sachin comes and tells me, this is a project I want, I said, okay, tell, Sachin, tell me more, make a presentation, tell me more. So he makes presentation. Parts of the presentation are not to my experience and liking. My linear thinking will say, attack and tell him you're wrong. And I will feel that I'm educating him. But instead I tell him, Sachin, can you give me a, a rational behind this? Why do you think this has been done this way? He gives me his rational. When he gives me his rational, I come to know his causal modeling. And when I know that, it's a great learning for me. Great learning for me. I thought Sachin is a youngster. He's a novice. He doesn't know things. But his way of thinking is something which I can capture. All this happens in a very comfortable, informal, supportive space. No threats. No judgments. No controlling. No acting that I am the boss and you are the junior. No. When this happens, assertive inquiry is a great tool. It seeks to explore the underpinnings of your own model. It uses the insight gained uh, to fashion a creative solution of the conflict between other models and your own. It doesn't challenge, it's, but it's pointed. It goes to the right direction. Seeks the salient data and causal maps baked into other models. This is what it does. It promotes generative reasoning and causal modeling. It breaks down conflicting models into pieces that can be recombined into something better. It produces robust causal models, model by enlisting more minds to explore. It maps the materials and the teleological links that undergrade the conflicting models. 
so many things it gives you to use this tool effectively you must not consider clashing models as conflict misunderstanding or hurt feelings instead treat it as an opportunity to make something positive of the clash and contribute to the valuable resolution like i told you the way we talk to them the communication as a professor of communication as faculty i use this one of the one of the topics that i i train the students into is through assertive inquiry how to go about making your workplace happen to you in a very proactive and a positive way right you can learn to use the tool by conducting an exercise the exercise is termed as personal case and is based on the technique from the methods and theories of chris targis of harvard the person has written a lot of uh, papers on organization behavior ob chris argris right you have to select an encounter with your participant that involves clash and ended very badly in egocentric terms uh, i'll just explain this to you in, in very short terms some clash has taken place between two groups and you make them sit together and resolve it first step then they sit together and resolve it they'll try to give their viewpoints on both sides and there'll be heated arguments then you get into assertive inquiry tell them to get into assertive inquiry why do you think the way you think and they'll say that i think the way i think because of this reason so without contesting without fighting you put your your point of view that i think the way i think because of the because of this background both of them are taking stock of their respective saliences and their respective causalities now when that happens they realize oh my god i never thought of that direction the same incident is treated by one team in one fashion and the same incident is treated by the other team in a different fashion totally opposite when opposites come they can collide but in this case when opposites come they merge into becoming a third i want you listeners who are who are watching this particular video to also watch a film called the remember the titans i remember the titans is about the american football black and white team coming together they have a black coach and that movie has got lots of things which i'm talking about here how the teams come together they get into assertive inquiry and then things start happening right participants in a paragraph or two explain the failed encounter this is about the process okay i'm running through it okay you write another paragraph and describe what you wanted to accomplish in the encounter recall and record as a dialogue in a play the actual conversation during the encounter on the left of the dialogue you have to provide commentary of the dialogue last write in short reflection on the outcome of the interaction participants in a paragraph of two explain the failed encounter what went wrong in a paragraph they'll explain then you write another paragraph to explain what you wanted this is what happened this is what i wanted second one okay on the left hand recall and record the dialogue in the play the actual conversation during there what actually happened actual paragraph narration and then actual dialogues and on the on the the second one is what i wanted to happen and on the left of the dialogue you have to provide the commentary of the dialogue what exactly is your commentary of the dialogue what exactly happened last write in short reflection on the outcome of the interaction what exactly happened as an outcome did the talks fail were there clashes were there conflicts were there some abusive words etc right the goal in carrying such an exercise is to diagnose what went wrong in the interaction find out find how parties inadvertently contributed to the outcome they didn't like find how could they have dele deleted dealt more productively find how the how the built from directly how they built from directly observable data higher order conclusions and find how that how that the sequence could have ended in a productive resolution you get a lot of information about how both the parties thought this actually gives you a resolution which will be a combination of a and b right and these personal cases help to see the tool of the assertive inquiry that can get you past the dead end of adult unaudited advocacy unaudited advocacy means advocacy which is pure on that i want to know more inquiry i want to really know what is it that i'm saying which you are not understanding or misunderstanding when i know that i know how to uh, rectify my ad advocacy in a different direction i'm giving directions to my boys the way i give the directions one 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 uh, youngster feels offended he doesn't tell me but through this process i come to know he says the way you talk to me is something i don't like i i don't i know what you're telling me 
so that advocacy part of me can change right by twining advocacy with inquiry you can learn how to give your opposable minds a chance to produce constructive resolution out of what seemed at first to be a conflict with no exit tools such as assertive inquiry allow integrative thinkers to give their stances force in the world and experience as we see in the next session enables integrative thinker to wield those tools with precision accuracy and lasting impact right and now we come to the summary of this chapter leap in the mind integrative thinkers can create something from nothing to arrive at this creative resolution they use three powerful tools of generative reasoning causal modeling and assertive inquiry instead of relying on traditional and inductive and deductive logic they pursue abductive logic to generate a model one has yet to see they use radial metaphor that helps with cognitive heavy lifting of keeping a coherent whole in mind while honing the individual parts by twining advocacy with inquiry they pro they provide opposable minds a chance to produce a constructive solution from conflict that had no exit so as a conclusion friends i just like to invite you for your own sake to take up certain challenging situations in your life which have not been resolved so far and go back into the thinking process of yours instead of blaming people and situations and ask your thinking process where is it that i have not used generative reasoning where is it that i have not gone for model cause causal modality ask questions to yourself and then you'll get some answers be open you may need a coach for doing this find a coach and make this happen because by doing that you come out of the misery of getting stuck in a situation and being in a dilemma for too long all the best thank you